Hello everyone and welcome back to the Military Tech Channel. Known for an ability to keep flying after taking multiple rounds of enemy machine gunfire, land and operate in rugged terrain, destroy groups of enemy fighters with a 30mm cannon, and unleash a wide arsenal of attack weapons, the A-10 is described by pilots as a flying tank in the sky. Able to hover over ground war and provide life-saving close air support in high-threat combat environments. It is built to withstand more damage than any other frame that I know of. It's known for its ruggedness. A-10 Pilot Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Hayden, 23rd Fighter Group Deputy, Moody AFB, told Scout Warrior in an interview. The pilot of the A-10 is surrounded by multiple plates of titanium armor designed to enable the aircraft to withstand small arms fire and keep flying its attack missions. A-10 Thunderbolt A, affectionately known as the Warthog, has been in service since the late 1970s and served as a close air support combat aircraft in conflicts such as the Gulf War, Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Areki Freedom, and Operation Allied Force in Kosovo, among others. If the aircraft loses all of its electronics, including its digital displays and targeting systems, the pilot of an A-10 can still fly, drop general purpose bombs, and shoot the 30 mm cannon, Hayden explained. So when I lose all the computers and the calculations, the targeting pod and the heads-up display, you can still point the aircraft using a degraded system at the target and shoot. We are actually trained for that he said. Unlike other air platforms built for speed, maneuverability, air-to-air dogfighting, and air-to-air -air weapons, the A-10 is specifically engineered around its gun, a 30 mm cannon aligned directly beneath the fuselage. The gun is also called a GAU-8 slash a Gatling gun. The 30 mm cannon has seven barrels. They are centered the way the aircraft fires. The firing barrel goes right down the center line. You can point the aircraft and shoot at the ground. It is designed for air-to-ground attack, Hayden explained. Armed with 1,150 rounds, the 30 mm cannon is able to fire 70 rounds a second. Hayden explained the gun alignment as being straight along the fuselage line without an upward can, like many other aircraft have. Also, the windows in the A-10 are also wider to allow pilots a larger field of view with which to see and attack targets. The engines of the A-10 are mounted high so that the aircraft can land in austere environments such as rugged, dirty, or sandy terrain, Hayden said. The engines on the A-10 are General Electric TF-34 GE-100 turbofans. I've seen this airplane land on a desert strip with the main gear buried in a foot of sand. On most planes, this would have ripped the gear up, but the A-10 turned right around and took off, he added. There have been many instances where A-10 engines were shot up and the pilots did not know until they returned from a mission, Hayden said. These aerodynamic configurations and engine technology allow the A-10 to fly slower and lower, in closer proximity to ground forces and enemy targets. The wings are straight and broadened. The engines are turbofan. They were selected and designed for their efficiency, not because of an enormous thrust. We have a very efficient engine that allows me to loiter with a much more efficient gas burn rate, Hayden said. Close air support. By virtue of being able to fly at slower speeds of 300, the A-10 can fly beneath the weather at altitudes of 100 feet. This gives pilots an ability to see enemy targets with the naked eye, giving them the ability to drop bombs, fire rockets, and open fire with a 30 mm cannon in close proximity to friendly forces. We shoot really close to people. We do it 50 meters away from people. I can sometimes see hands and people waving. If I get close enough and low enough, I can see the difference between good guys and bad guys and shoot, Hayden explained. The aircraft's bombs, rockets and cannon attack enemies up close 
or from miles sway. Depending on the target and slant range of the aircraft, Hayden added. A 10 avionics technology. Pilots flying attack missions in the aircraft communicate with other aircraft and ground forces using radios and a data link known at LAANG-16. Pilots can also text message with other aircraft and across platforms, Hayden added. The cockpit is engineered with what is called the CASS cockpit for common avionics architecture system, which includes moving digital map displays and various screens showing pertinent information, such as altitude, elevation, surrounding terrain and target data. At 10 pilots also wear a high-tech helmet, which enables them to look at targeting video on a helmet display. I can project my targeting pod video into my eye so I can see the field of view. If something shoots at me, I can target it simply by looking at it, he explained. The future of the A-10. Many lawmakers, observers, veterans, analysts, pilots and members of the military have been following the unfolding developments regarding the Air Force's plans for the A-10. Citing budgetary reasons, Air Force leaders had said they planned to begin retiring its fleet of A-10s as soon as this year. Some Air Force personnel maintained that other air assets, such as the F-16, an emerging F-35 multi-role stealth fighter, would be able to fill the mission gap and perform close air support missions once the A-10 retired. However, a chorus of concern from lawmakers and the A-10's exemplary performance in the ongoing air attacks against ISIS has led the Air Force to extend the planned service life of the aircraft well into the 2020s. Despite the claim that other air assets could pick up the close air support mission, advocates for the A-10 consistently state that the platform has an unmatched ability to protect ground troops and perform the close air support mission. Now, the Air Force has begun a three-pronged strategy to replace or sustain the A-10, which involves looking at ways to upgrade and preserve the existing aircraft, assessing what platforms might be available on the market today, or designing a new close air support airplane. Sending the close air support aircraft to the boneyard would save an estimated $4.2 billion over five years alone, Air Force officials previously said. The overall costs of the program, including life cycle management, sustainment and upkeep had made the A-10 budget targets for the service. However, many lawmakers pushed back on the plans. There have been many advocates for the A-10 among lawmakers who have publicly questioned the prior Air Force strategy to retire the aircraft. Senator Kelly Ayotte, R. A. N. Ent, and Senator John McCain have been among some of the most vocal supporters of the A-10.